Hello and welcome everyone to another edition of the Daily Night. I am your host, Brian Smith, and this is the main event, if you will. What I'm talking about is obviously Isaiah Bowser announcing yesterday that he was coming back to UCF. This was a major addition to the roster because, quite frankly, most people, myself included, expected him to turn pro. But during the time that he was at UCF this year, he did have some injuries. Maybe that caused it for, for whatever reason. That's not for me to decide. Isaiah Bowser will be back in a Knights uniform in 2022. I want to talk a little bit about what will go on in regards to how UCF can use him in a way that makes other players around the offense better, in addition to <clears throat> how some of the other positions need to also, quote-unquote, add players. Ironically, he is a player that came to UCF after playing three years at Northwestern. He's coming back for a fifth year, and they need some transfers and stuff to kind of solidify the offense. I have a depth chart up in front of me, and I, you, you lose sight of what you – had and then it leaves until you put it in front of your eyes. UCF lost some talent on offense. They're going to miss Brandon Johnson. He scored 11 touchdowns. That's a lot. Nate Craig Myers, does he come back? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know what the, the injury, the COVID year, and all, I don't know how all that's going to gonna play out. I'm I'm a little concerned about the depth at receiver. I think they need a couple of transfers. They also have a certain young man from Georgia coming in who I'm very high on, and the two kids from Florida, all three will play. All three of the freshmen will play in some capacity, but the numbers are not good. Freshmen usually hit a wall, so all of that concern. Tight end is a disaster in terms of depth until otherwise proven. They don't have any. This is the... Out of all the teams that are either in Power 5 or about to be, UCF is probably the shortest in terms of depth at tight end on how they used it of any school in the country. Al Collar is a good player, but you need two, conservatively, three more of him. That's just reality. So they need a couple of transfers there. O-line is a little bit more interesting. I'm pretty sure, barring something changing, which it could have, that Samuel Jackson's going to come back. You've got the big kid from Hawaii coming back, Matthew Lee coming back. Cole's going to leave, I would imagine, and Marcus Tatum's going to leave. Um, I like Adrian Medley. He played some and was pretty darn good. Uh, Ed Collins could be a guy that, that gets some playing time next year. And they, you know, they've got a big kid coming in. That's a transfer. That's also very important. I'll grab his name here in a sec. But they don't have a ton of depth there, but it's not – precarious like receiver uh the one spot they're loaded is running back i mean they are flat out loaded um i don't think that you're in a situation where you would worry if you didn't get a transfer but as soon as i say that they'll have a rash of injuries and that's why recruiting is always precarious to project you can only guess so much because like this year gus malzahn said to me at a press conference we lost 27 guys from the beginning of the season to injuries and transfers 27 that is asinine. You can't expect that kind of attrition at any program. And quite honestly, it's it's one of those things that if, if you're UCF, <clears throat> what do you do to make it work? And this is what I mean by that. As I'm pulling this up, by the way, Jalen Curry has apparently joined UCF. I didn't even know that. But UCF is in a situation where they they go through just hell on earth, and it changes how you practice. So what do you do? I mean, you can't. You can't have that happen again. What can't be that bad two years in a row? And it usually isn't. Turnovers and injuries are the things that kind of rotate, traditionally speaking. So I kind of want to get all that out of the way in, in terms of Bowser. But Jalen Jalen Curry, by the way, is like a 6'2", 190-pound kid. Pretty good player. He's out of Houston. Played at a private school in Houston. Went to Arizona, and now he's transferring. Arizona was god-awful. I don't know how a program located where they're at and being such a good school can suck at football every year, but Arizona has found a way to accomplish that. 
anyway, back to the Bowser point. These are the three points that I think he changes the game for UCF next year beyond the actual, okay, he can block, he can run, he can catch. Those are the obvious. I'm not, not going to waste your time with that. Number one is how he prepares. How Isaiah Bowser prepares. From what I'm told, this is a guy that takes his training, his diet, his regimen very seriously. After the success that he had this past season doing that, he's been around these guys for about a year. I'm not saying they didn't have some rub off from that. Other players, not just running back, but any position, but it will be wholehearted. It's going to impact other players on the roster. That's number one. Number two, how he practices to get ready for a game. He has to be good at it because the most difficult attribute of being a running back at the major college level is pass protection. I've told this story before, and I'll, I'll give the shortened version of it right now, but there was a certain running back a number of years back that was a national recruit, and I told him, I said, you play in an offense at your high school. I'll leave the high school in the whole nine out just to be nice. I said, you don't have to pass block much. When you go to this school that I know you're going to go to next year, you better figure it out real quick. I don't care how much you can run. They're not going to, A, play you much if you can't pass block because your quarterback's going to get killed. And number two, you're going to get embarrassed. I just so happened to go to a practice where he went to school. And guess what they did for a drill? Linebacker slash edge defender slash defensive end, whatever the hell you want to call it, gets a running start. Running back takes about a step forward, lowers his butt, and tries to brace himself. The result was pretty much the following. Mack truck, meet mosquito. And this is a kid that was recruited coast to coast. He had like 35 offers. Smoked. Bowser, now he's 225 and he's a grown man. But his technique is good enough, he can at least hold his own. There's no running back that's going to consistently run over an outside linebacker who's A, bigger, and B, getting a running start. The math does not work. But it's going to help with him being there because, like, Johnny's not that big. He's got to cut guys. There's no helping there, and that's one of the reasons that he probably doesn't play more. You have to be able to pass block. As a running back, what happened to Dylan this past year in the Louisville game is just an example. I don't care who it is, what program, when you lose your starting quarterback, things go sideways. There are a few schools that get lucky and the second string guy ends up being good or at the NFL. That's the exception, not the rule. Isaiah Bowser can block. It will help Mikey Keene feel more comfortable in the pocket. It will help the guys around him in practice, seeing him do it. It will make a difference in UCF winning football games. Wholeheartedly, that is humongous. It will never get talked about in any magazine, even Phil Steele, who's very good, by the way. It is not something that can be overlooked, and I shall not. The biggest factor, him coming back, isn't running the ball. It's him pass protecting. They are a different team when he's in there in pass protection because he knows the protections. He knows when to switch him. He knows when to talk to Mikey. He is a coach on the field. The final part with him, and this is just, just my guess, he wants to go to the NFL. <clears throat> he needs to do something special this next year to raise his draft stock or he would have already left. No idea what his draft grade came back, but it apparently wasn't what he wanted it to be. My guess is, the again, very important word, guess, is that the injury bug really gives the NFL pause, and it probably should. It would make me not want to draft it. If I was a general manager, they get paid for guys to play and contribute, not standing on the sideline like me. I can stand on the sideline and not score any touchdowns too. He's just not been durable. He has to stay durable this next next year, playing minimum 10 full games, full games. It's just a roll of the dice. He's never been able to stay healthy since his freshman year. The last three seasons, he's been hurt. When he plays, he's great, but he gets hurt. He has to prove that, and I think that's a mental thing. I hope he doesn't like overdo it. You know, if you're hurt, you have to sit out too. That's the catch 22. With that, here are a couple of things that I expect to see because of Bowser in the lineup. And I don't know, <clears throat> Ch 
Chip being the new coordinator, I don't know how they're going to do all this. I don't know which quarterbacks are going to be involved. Obviously, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about the backup quarterback at Ole Miss, Rice Plumley. He's in the portal. It's strongly rumored that he's going to UCF. Hint, he's going to go to UCF. Barring something unforeseen, he is a very fast kid, not a great passer, phenomenal athlete and runner. That'll add to what they do. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. I have no idea. But you have him. You can run different things with Bowser in the lineup and him in the lineup at the same time. But you can also add Johnny Richardson in the slot or running both running backs. The formations and the play calling totally changes when you add Bryce Plumley and Bowser in the backfield. And then you have other speedster guys like Amari. Amari Johnson may not be the greatest receiver in the world, but if you give him a step, he's going to score. He is fast as all get out. This just then Jalen Robinson, Ryan O'Keefe, giving them a step. It's six points. UCF will have one of the fastest offenses in the country, regardless of school. And I'm talking Clemson, Ohio State, Alabama, Notre Dame, USC, Texas A&M, anybody. All those schools have receivers going to the NFL. UCF will as well. This is going to be very interesting because Bowser gives them more time to run deeper routes. Again, that pass protection thing, play action. Obviously, he can grind it out between the tackles. All of this just works off each other. Football, everything is connected. Think of a chalkboard. Ten categories. They're individualized. With Bowser in the lineup, they're all rings that are connected because they work off one one another. His value goes beyond his 4.8 yards per carry or whatever the hell it is. He gets you the ball down the field in a position to score even when he doesn't touch the football. Not many football players can do that. Blocking, the way he trains, Pass protections, helping the quarterback, helping the O-line, helping the tight end. Stuff that is not statistically evident. That's Isaiah Bowser. UCF will be in a position to run plays when he's in the game that the coaches may not say it. They're not going to be as competent when other running backs are in there, barring something changing. The you know, Think of a, a five-step or seven-step drop from a traditional West Coast offense, you know, like the two-hitch, seven-step drop. You don't see that anymore in UCF run shotgun, but a play that takes a long time to develop down the field, that running back has to be able to hold up. And, and I love Johnny as a running back. He's not going to be able to block the same. It's just not. He weighs about 50 pounds less, literally. You need that. Mark Anthony Richards needs to play a little bit more, in my opinion, this next year for that reason as well. But UCF is in a position with him to bring him along without like murdering him, and maybe he can take some of the carries off of Bowser. He needs to get six, eight carries a game next year, in my opinion. Bowser hates coming out of the game, and I get it. I'd rather him get 17 carries and Mark get like one-third, he gets two-third, and then Johnny's your mix-in guy. And if anybody else gets into the lineup, that's a great thing. It's a nice bonus, but those three, you should be pretty good. And then with – Rice Plumley, I assume he would come in and start. That's just my opinion. Maybe he won't, but that is a hell of a running game, and it's a pain in the butt. They'll probably mix and match and do some things, but that's that's Gus Malzahn. He's got to work it out through spring practice, summer, and fall camp. That'll take care of itself. I don't have any idea when that's going to be announced, by the way, but that's that's the rumor. Final point, and then I'll get out of here on this. UCF, if they can get the transfers, again, I just want to go over this. They need two receivers. They need two tight ends. And then Plumley. the offense can be rocket speed next year. They can run a lot of really big points, you know, 35 and up kind of deals over and over again like they used to be a little bit different, but they'll be able to take more deep shots. Again, Bowser being in there to block is so valuable. And they'll also be able to run some of those jet sweeps, some basic plays, and just beat teams laterally with more speed, especially in the American Athletic Conference. There's not going to be any team now that that Cincinnati's losing just like 80% of their key guys. They'll be able to score on anybody. Cincinnati's defense ate UCF alive this past year. I don't think that'll happen again next year if all these things happen. Two receivers, two tight ends. They need to be able to run packages and sub the crap out of teams. 
they're not where they need to be yet and have the freshman, not one or the other, both. And if they can do that, they'll be pretty good next year on offense. So Isaiah Bowser is a huge addition, and it's something to really look at. Uh, one final point, uh, FGA report. It's the other thing I do on YouTube. Make sure you check that out. I have a lot of information. We just did an interview a little bit ago with a kid that's got an offer from UCF, and they're after him pretty hard. He's out of Georgia. Imagine that. UCF does a great job of recruiting the state of Georgia. Make sure you check that out on my YouTube page. Hit like, hit subscribe. Everybody have a great night. I appreciate it. Take care.